Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Mike. There have been a lot of really interesting things that have been happening in the past few weeks, and it's just, it's been crazy. It's been so crazy. Let me just talk about the Space Access Conference that I went to, which was awesome. I met so many cool people there, and I had so much fun because there was all these industry people there, all these people that were either the CEOs or lead engineers or presidents of the companies that I talk about and want to talk about. So it was really just so awesome for me. I mean, it was like meeting a bunch of celebrities or rock stars or something for me being amongst all these people and just being like holy crap you know this is happening so let me just show you some of the footage that I got on uh, my first day at the conference so I'm on my way right now to the uh, space access conference and I'm really excited about it you know this isn't just you know me and my friends getting together for something this is this is official this is real and um, I'm really looking forward to the second speaker uh, today who is going to be from NASA talking about the progress of uh, COX and uh, CC Dev. We'll talk about that more later. But um, I'm getting into some crazy traffic right now, so I'm going to go right now. Look at this freaking rocket. This is huge. This is awesome. So as you may or may not already know, I really like a company called SpaceX and you can see some of my videos about them right here. And I recently made a new video about their announcement about the Falcon Heavy, which you can watch right here. And first of all, I just need to apologize because I played the video that is just the stock video that has been released. And then this happened. <laughs> yeah! Falcon Heavy, that's what I'm talking about. That's freaking awesome. <sighs> Although it is awesome, I just need to, you know, not be so weird. So the whole reason that I even started talking about SpaceX, though, was because the president of SpaceX gave a presentation at Space Access. And uh, this, unfortunately, was all I was able to get. But then your question is... So while we're growing, we're at 13, just about 1,300 employees, uh, and we continue to grow. Uh, 2010 was our biggest year by far. We started the year with 800 folks, and we ended with 1,200, and we had, and that was a net. And that was about the moment that I found out that I couldn't film any of the actual conference. Now, any interviews that I did after the presentations, that I can upload. So, I was able to sit down with Gwen Shotwell, who is the president of SpaceX, that woman that you just saw, and was able to ask her a few questions. And it's very brief, and you know, she was a very busy woman, so I didn't want to take up too much of her time, but check this out. How did you personally get started at SpaceX? I was taking a friend out to lunch who was uh, working for Elon at the time, and I mentioned to Elon that he needed to replace him. Yeah. So, uh, so I got a Oops. call later that afternoon. Yeah. And you got the job. I got a job. And then, um, can you tell me a little bit more about how um, how you guys going to have like the same problems you did launching from Vanderburg for the Falcon Heavy as you did with Falcon 9? I know there were a few delays and like getting authorization. Well, we never got permission to launch Falcon 1 from oh. Vandenberg. Oh, okay. That's why we packed our bags and moved to Kwajalein. Oh. Um, and, but the scenario, the situation is so different now. Um, Falcon Heavy is a vehicle that the Air Force is interested in. They didn't really care about Falcon 1 at the time. Um, we've got our own site, uh, Slip 4. Whereas Falcon 1, we were sharing the site with Lockheed, the Atlas V. So it's a very different set of circumstances. We've also demonstrated competence. So it'll, it'll be hard for them to tell us we can't. They won't. Yeah. And then I know you guys have an internship program, but do you guys have any sort of volunteer program? You mentioned that earlier. You know, we don't, I, I've never heard of a volunteer program. <laughs> um, I would recommend an internship program. We pay pretty well, the interns. <laughs> Thank you so much for, uh, for doing this. So that was really cool for me personally to be able to do that, especially since I've already made so many videos about SpaceX. And, uh, you know, I would have asked her more questions, probably more pertinent questions, but I was so starstruck at the time that it was hard for me to think coherently. Uh, but it was really awesome. Thank you again, Gwen Shotwell, for answering my questions. And, uh, you know, as far as volunteering goes, SpaceX, you know, if you guys need any PR work done, hit me up. 
Okay, all self-promoting aside, I just want to talk about SpaceX for a little bit longer. There's a lot of things that have happened since the videos that I've already released, um, excluding the Falcon Heavy video. I mean, in this video right here, I talk about the launch that happened on December 8th, which was awesome. It was such a cool mission. And then I have some updates right here, and then uh, some more updates right here about the different things about that mission, and you know, the future things that they were working on, and how much money they were getting. And, all the milestones that they've accomplished. Uh, so watch those videos and you can find out all that kind of information. But let's talk about the things that have happened since then that I haven't talked about yet. A lot of you already know a lot of this, but for those of you that don't know, let me just go through some of this real quick. There is a challenge out there uh, by the XPRIZE Foundation that have monetary prizes. And they have a challenge out right now called the Google Lunar X Prize. And the challenge is to send a robot to the moon and have it, you know, go around for a certain amount of distance and send back live video. Uh, well, it might not have to be live, but to send back video from the moon and the first person to do it gets $30 million. And where SpaceX comes into all of this is they have offered every single team that is competing in the Google Lunar X Prize a discount. Uh, to launch on one of their rockets to get their robot to the moon. And some of the teams that have come out are really interesting. I mean, some of them is Astrobotic and a bunch of other really interesting multinational teams. And I'll talk about more of those later because each one deserves its own uh, spotlight. Uh, so I'll talk about that more later. But that's a really cool thing that SpaceX has announced. And something else that's really cool for SpaceX is they have gotten their first geostationary orbit uh, contract. But the significance of them being able to do that is geostationary orbit is a very sought after orbit to orbit around the Earth to have the communication satellites and GPS satellites and, and all sorts of things like that. And that's a big step for SpaceX because that's mainly been the market of the bigger companies that are government sponsored. And this may have something to do with the fact that the Air Force, NASA, and the National Reconnaissance Office have announced that they've agreed on a plan to set forth rules to allow companies like SpaceX and other commercial companies to launch uh, sensitive payloads like reconnaissance satellites and any other types of you know secret uh, satellites and military payloads, maybe even X-37s. And with the whole geostationary orbit deal with SES, all the Iridium flights are going to be flying, all the COTS missions that are going to be flying for NASA, and the announcement of the Falcon Heavy, you know, and SpaceX should be able to be allowed into the game. And they're kind of letting it out there that not only SpaceX is, is who they're fighting for to try to set up these rules, but also you know, as many commercial companies that can have that kind of capability that they can. And so that's really awesome. And it's great news for SpaceX. I wish them all the success that they can. I mean, there's a lot of people that are kind of writing and placing a lot of their hope on this company. And it's a lot of pressure to have. But, you know, I believe that SpaceX isn't the only company that we are seeing really cool developments from. And that in the future, we're going to be able to fly to space on payloads, whether it be, you know, cargo or satellites or even people. So go SpaceX, but there are other companies out there that we could be seeing a lot of these things from in very near future. And it's going to be a very exciting time in the next couple of years. And uh, it, hopefully I'm, I'm able to kind of let you know what's going on and be able to spread the word and let people know that what, what an amazing future we're going to have. So tune in next time. We'll talk about some of the other companies. I need to really start doing profiles on companies like Orbital Sciences and then what some of the bigger guys are planning to do, you know, with Lockheed and, and Boeing. They actually have some really interesting things that is, I think is worth talking about. So we're going to talk about all that stuff later. Uh, leave me comments. Uh, don't forget to thumb me up. Uh, if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you next time.